Did you know? Mass Effect's existence is the direct result of a Star Wars video game. In 1999, LucasArts asked Canadian developer BioWare to create a Star Wars game to tie in with the film Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. They gave BioWare the choice between designing the game around the story of the movie, or to create a new story set 4,000 years before the events of Episode 1. BioWare chose the latter because they felt it gave them more creative freedom. This resulted in Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. After finishing the game, some of the developers wanted to make a game with even more creative freedom, using their own universe and lore. So, the Knights of the Old Republic team began to work on a new IP with accessible, shooter-based gameplay, partially inspired by Deus Ex. This new game ultimately became Mass Effect. During the planning stages, special focus was centered around fantasy fulfillment, and so, players were given their own ship and a commanding role. It was decided that morality would be measured based on player choices, like in Knights of the Old Republic. But, rather than a single good or evil sliding scale, Mass Effect's morality system recorded actions on a different scale known as Paragon and Renegade. In Mass Effect 3, over 64% of players chose more Paragon options than Renegade, despite all the press attention on the Renegade actions. When asked if low statistics influenced the developers to stop providing these options in future projects, director Casey Hudson said no. He explained that even if gamers aren't picking certain choices, the fact that the option exists makes players feel that much more empowered. Another Mass Effect 3 statistic that surprised the developers was that more players saved the Geth than the Quarians. This gathering of player stats is part of BioWare's extensive process of analyzing player feedback. After the release of Mass Effect 1, the developers compiled an enormous list of comments from fans. The improved texture load times and larger range of customization in Mass Effect 2 were prioritized because of fan commentary. Another feature in Mass Effect 2 that fans are responsible for is the ability to select romance options with Garrus. Casey Hudson stated that after the release, Garrus became one of the most popular romance characters in the game. The anatomy of some alien creatures were inspired by Earth-life anatomy. The Krogan species were designed after art director Matt Rhodes had been sketching insects and bats. The faces of the Krogans were inspired by the Centurio Senex, or wrinkle-faced bats, from Central America. Originally, the eyes of the Krogans were on the sides of their heads, but this was changed because from an evolutionary standpoint, only prey develop eyes on the side, not predators. The Asari were designed after the writers decided they wanted a race comprised entirely of beautiful women. The hair-like fins were developed around the look of a modern human hairstyle. The result caused the creatures to appear quite aquatic in nature, which then informed other design choices such as their flat noses and clothing. The Asari's bright-colored skin tone was influenced by the distinct green-skinned Orion from Star Trek. The design for a single Asari male was drafted at some point during development, but it wasn't well-liked and was thus scrapped and has since been lost. The Salarians were inspired by the typical grey alien look known from science fiction and folklore. The writers wanted this race to be the explanation for alien abduction stories from humans prior to them becoming a galactic stage species. Morden's character design was inspired by Clint Eastwood in his older age. A series of amusing easter eggs can be found among the endlessly detailed environments of the Mass Effect series. Far too many to cover all at once, but here are a few fan favorites. On several explorable locations in the game, including the Earth's moon, strange sounds can be heard if the player remains still in very specific places. Although never confirmed by Bioware, it's speculated that these peculiar noises are songs from the believed extinct race, the Rachni. In Mass Effect 2, if the player stands near Legion for long enough, he will begin to do the robot. On the planet Novaria, during the mission to restore power at Peak 15, the virtual intelligence Mira pops up and says, It looks like you're trying to restore this facility. Would you like help? This is a reference to Clippy, the annoying Microsoft Office pop-up helper. Shepard's renegade response is, oh crap, a pop-up. There's another reference when speaking to Mira in a different location. In the hot labs on the planet Novaria, after the player asks the Russian doctor for codes, a Rachni soldier will kill him. If the codes are not retrieved from his body, two options will be available at the Mira terminal. When mumble something is selected, Shepard will try to guess the code, saying, uh... Sick, semper, 
This phrase, sic semper tyrannis, is Latin for thus always to tyrants, and has been invoked historically as a rallying cry against abuse of power. It's said to have been uttered by Marcus Junius Brutus during the assassination of Julius Caesar, as well as John Wilkes Booth during his assassination of Abraham Lincoln. In Mass Effect 2, if the player launches a probe at Uranus, Edie will make a crude remark, Probe Uranus. Really, Commander? In Mass Effect 3, when Joker activates the stealth drive, he says, The only way they'll detect us is if you won't start singing the Russian national anthem. This is a reference to the hunt for Red October, in which an elusive Russian nuclear submarine, the Red October, undetectable by traditional means, is located by the American sub sonar after the Russian crew starts singing. When Shepard speaks to Captain Bailey in Mass Effect 2, Bailey mentions, Spending a year dead is a popular tax dodge. This is a reference to the second book in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series, in which Ford Prefect tries to speak to his friend Hot Black Desiato, but is told that he is spending a year dead for tax reasons. One easter egg is a bit of an inside joke from the developers. A space cow on the planet Antaram is labeled shifty looking cow. If the player tries to speak to the animal, nothing will happen at first, but soon it will start to follow Shepard around and slowly steal his or her credits. According to the designer, Dusty Everman, when the character artist designed the space cow with two extra arms, Preston, our lead designer, was a little creeped out. His comment was, you can't trust any animal that can milk itself. Those extra little hands hands look so grabby. So Preston came up with the idea of Shifty Cow. Turn your back on him and those creepy little hands are going to go to work. Kiss those credits goodbye. That's all for today, but don't forget to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming and follow Did You Know Gaming on Facebook and Twitter. Make sure you also check out DidYouKnowGaming.com and if you like this video, check out our other videos. Or, if you'd like an in-depth look at what makes the game design of the Mass Effect series so great, why don't you check out my video on Mass Effect 2 over on my channel. I have tons of game design retrospectives and parodies as well, so hooray for video games!